Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a CT of the abdomen and pelvis in a patient with right lower quadrant pain and fever. I'll give you a chance to look over the case, get a general perspective on what we have here. And I'll give you some high resolution thin images is actually the mid-abdomen down through the pelvis. You can see these are high-resolution images. Okay. So th those are the axial images. Let's take a look at the coronals now. Okay. You can see we've excluded the upper part of the abdomen possibly because this was done with particular concern about appendicitis. Uh, let's look at the axial images. So this is where we're starting. We don't have the entirety of the upper abdomen, but still we can say liver, spleen, and pancreas. Let's look at the liver that we do see. Liver, the part, the part of the spleen that we do see, and the portion of the pancreas we see look normal. Gallbladder appears unremarkable. Abdominal aorta is normal in caliber. We don't see the lung bases. There's one adrenal gland there on the right. Here's one on the left. Here we can see both kidneys have a normal symmetric enhancement pattern. No masses, no signs of obstruction. And we look in the pelvis. No free fluid. Urinary bladder appears unremarkable. Here's the rectosigmoid colon. So whatever is the problem? Well, we want to look in the right lower quadrant because we have a clinical history that's very suggestive of appendicitis. Let's take a look and let's see what we identify that we know. So if we're going down from the hepatic flexure, and this is obviously stool in the hepatic flexure, and we go more inferiorly, we're in the right colon. So let's see where the right colon ends, and it ends right about here. Okay. And right around that area, you see this indistinct stranding. You see how they have a nice, clean, dark fat with a sharp margin adjacent to the associated bowel in that area, whereas in this area, we don't have that sharp margin. You do have it around the psoas, but around the cecum, the lower right colon, we have this ill-defined strandy area and the fat does not look as clean and sharp in this vicinity as what we see here on the other side. So that's typical of inflammation. That's, in, that's typical of stranding in the fat from inflammation because the inflammatory process or any inflammatory process is producing a, uh, an inflammation in the adjacent soft tissues that manifests as stranding and this somewhat higher attenuation. So this is a good image here showing you the nice clean fat here in the retroperitoneum and here or in the peritoneum. And here we have stranding that's really quite conspicuous. So what could be causing it? Well, let's take a look here. We have a structure here that's tubular and it has a little high attenuation focus in it. So that looks suspicious for an abnormal appendix. You can see the wall of this structure here. Let's take a look at some of the high resolution images and see if this gives us, gives us any more of a confidence in terms of what we're looking at there. Here again, high resolution axial images showing you this stranding, this indistinct soft tissue attenuation almost, almost as high attenuation as soft tissue. This is soft tissue here in the lower portion of the right colon. This is soft tissue here in the psoas muscle. And here you have this stranding appearance in the pericolonic fat and the fat in the right lower quadrant adjacent to the psoas muscle. Look over here and notice that contrast. This is what we're looking for. This finding of this line here, this line here, these little tiny linear opacities here. This is what we look for when we think we might have an inflammatory process and this is what we want to look for. Here again, that asymmetry of this indistinct appearance of the 
fat adjacent to the lower right colon in contrast to that that we're seeing on the contralateral side. Let's take a look at the coronal images and let's see what we have here. Aha! So here we have what we described earlier as the hepatic flexure and the right colon going downward. Now we expect to see the terminal ileum coming into the right colon somewhere and that's always nice to be able to identify and I think it's right here. This is where it is. Okay, so right here, this is the level of the ileocecal valve. This is cecum. This is all right colon. So we expect to see the terminal ileum coming in here. Let's see. And here indeed is a fluid containing an air containing viscous. Even though we don't see it well, you don't expect to always see things well like this but it's knowing the anatomic relationships and being able to say, okay, this is right colon, it has stool in it, it's on the right side. This is the lowermost part of what appears to be the right colon, so this is gonna be cecum, and somewhere a little bit up there and medially, we're gonna be seeing the terminal ileum because we expect to see it there. So it's not that this looks like the terminal ileum or that I can look at it from a distance and say that's the terminal ileum, but it's by identifying the terminal ileum and its anatomic relationship to the right colon and cecum and the expected position of the ileocecal valve that we can say this is terminal ileum, this is right colon, this is cecum, so I expect the appendix to come off of the cecum somewhere and looking at this tubular structure here which has two high attenuation structures within it, certainly is very suspicious for, an, for the appendix. It's abnormally thickened, and these two high attenuation structures are very likely appendicoliths, stones in the appendix. And I would say that the appendix looks like it ends blindly right here, and so now as we go back through the appendix, we see this structure right here. We see it here. Now this is cecum up here, right superior to it. We see it here. And then we start seeing it start to curve around this way as a tubular structure with these two stones in it, appendicleliths. They're not actually stones. They're usually concretions or high attenuation solid particulate structures that uh, are formed from stool. So they're basically fecaliths. Uh, they can be calcified though. They can be frankly calcified. Uh, and I think that the appendix comes around here and joins the inferior medial aspect of the cecum right around here. So this is a classic example of appendicitis with a thickened appendix. Now up to seven millimeters is normal this is probably uh, 10, 11, maybe 12 millimeters diameter. It's greater than, it's at least a centimeter diameter and that's abnormal. So the presence of a thickened appendix with appendicoliths, even without appendicoliths, but with appendicoliths, it's even more suspicious. And periappendiceal stranding, now you can see all of that fatty stranding in the coronal plane you see that haziness of the fat in contrast to the nice dark fat on the other side. That's what you want to look for. Okay, so, so this is a classic example of appendicitis on CT and we use CTs very commonly to make this diagnosis. It's uh, virtually the gold standard for the diagnosis of appendicitis.